Okay, so now let's have a look a little bit more detail in our EPUB, uh, the, the Reef Level EPUB, uh, and see what kind of problems we had and what kind of things we can solve. I'll just remind you of what we've got here. Um, this was our first problem, is that we really want the life of Shakespeare heading to be on a page by itself. That's how it is in the, uh, in the InDesign document. Let me just remind you of that. So that's what we've got currently. Um, there are also a couple of other problems which I'd like to point out to you. Uh, for example, um, you can see here that uh, there's no line underneath the heading. And also the leading for, the, um, uh, for, for this uh, text is quite tight in the EPUB, uh, not as tight in the InDesign document. And so I just need to uh, explain to you uh, what's going on there as well and see if we can fix that. Uh, if we just go through the ebook and have a look at a few other problems. There's also um, a, a colour underneath uh, this um, block quote and if we look at the block quotes that we've got actually in, in design you'll see that there's simply a line along on the left hand side so again it's another thing that's uh, not quite working and we might need to address that or find a way of addressing that in our uh, final export uh, to EPUB. Uh, also um, our heading for the play is uh, okay, but it's uh, we want really want that to appear uh, somewhere near the center of the page. So let's have a look at one or two of these problems then. First of all, the heading for the life of Shakespeare. Um, this is appearing like this because we've actually got a page break after, and it's uh, pushing the page onto the next uh, text onto the next screen. But unfortunately, that's something that's ignored in the uh, export to the Reflub or EPUB, so we need to find another way of resolving that. Um, so what I'm going to suggest that we do is we take this text here, uh, copy this, uh, and put this uh, over here just for the moment, draw a text box here, and actually put that text back like that. So we now have that as one uh, text block, which we can uh, export in a particular way which we'll um, have a look at in a minute um, and now what I want to do is to delete this text here because we obviously don't want that to be there and uh, we can just simply ignore this this text frame down at the bottom we'll just leave that where it is for the moment okay so what we need to do now with this is to take this text here go to our uh, export options and just make some small changes to this. We're going to make this a uh, subtitle from the point of view of EPUB type. Um, the custom layout is going to be that we want this in the center. Uh, we're going to insert a page break after this image. It's calling it an image, but of course it's not really an image. And we're going to fix that size. So that's a fixed size. And we're going to say done to that. Um, now, there's another thing that we need to do that. I wonder if you can guess what it is. Um, I'm going to now bring up the articles panel. And the articles panel currently has this in it. Because if you remember, we're ordering everything by the um, by the, uh, the, the, the whatever appears in the articles panel. But we now need to put this uh, into the articles as well. So I'm going to bring it into here. We're going to call this... Um, Heading for Life of Shakespeare. Now, the point is that that's got to be in the right position. So if we now have a look here, uh, we've got the intro text here. This text is actually coming after the table of contents. So I need to drag that into that position there to make sure it appears in the right order. OK, that should solve that one. Now, the one that I'm going to show you now is uh, something that we can't necessarily solve until a bit later, but I'll just explain to you why it's uh, why, why we're not getting a line underneath these headings. Um, so this text here is a header, um, and the style that we're using is header 2, and the reason we've got this line underneath is because we're using a paragraph rule, a line below of three point, um, in a particular colour, that is ignored when we export to the Reflurable EPUB and we're going to have to show you how we put that back with some uh, very uh, clever CSS uh, later on. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Now the other thing is that this text here, now um, I'm going to look at this 
paragraph style here because um, if we look at our paragraph style you'll see that um, and again I'll just remind you by comparing it to the um, to this text here in our here we are we have a look here the, the leading that's coming out in our EPUB is much too tight we really want to loosen that up and I just need to explain to you why that's happening so if we now look at the style for the paragraph your rules you'll see that the actual leading is 13 points 12 point size 13 point leading but in, in actual fact if we now look at indents and spacing you'll, she, you'll see that we're actually aligning this to the baseline grid so what you see in in design and ultimately in the print of course is that this um, the spacing between the lines of the text is set because of the baseline grid. If I just turn that off for the moment, you'll see how ch how it changes. Now what we're seeing is the spacing between the lines is based on the leading that's set. So what we need to do is to make sure that when we export to EPUB, uh, and by the way, the uh, the grid lines uh, baseline grid is completely ignored in the reflub or EPUB. So what we need to do is to set the leading. Uh, by going to here, set the leading to the same as the baseline grid. Let me show you what the baseline grid is set to. Let's have a look at the grids. Okay, so here we see that the baseline grid is incremented at 13.606 points. Strange number, but that's because it was di a divis division uh, to, to divide exactly uh, the, uh, the, the, the size of the text box for our print. So 13. Is th th this number uh, is actually what we want uh, when we change the style for our paragraph. So I'm going to go to basic uh, and then we're going to put that into there. Now let's see if that makes any difference. It doesn't make any difference here, uh, but I should just explain that if, if this is only slightly bigger than the baseline grid, let's make that seven, you'll see that it jumps to the next baseline grid. So this has either got to be less or exactly the same as the baseline grid for it to work. Okay, so that's that one sorted out. What else do we need to do? We also want to try to do something about the way that the play heading appears. So I'm just going to sort that out, that one out as well. Uh, let's now go to our object export options and we're going to make sure that that is set to fixed. We can even change it to be a hundred percent wide. It is possible to put in a percentage in there as well. So I'm going to do that and um, I'm going to set some space above to make sure that it's pushed down. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Um, there's no guarantee that this is all going to be absolutely perfect, but I'm just going to have another go now at exporting this to the EPUB. Okay, here we are. And make sure we're the same as the articles panel. We're going to use the on-screen table of contents. That's fine. Let's see what this comes out like. Okay, there's our life of Shakespeare. I should have actually put some um, padding above it, but we can always sort that out later. The leading is much better. We still need to resolve this uh, darkness behind the text. Uh, we've also now got this set um, correctly here and you'll see that if I change the size of these pages, make them wider, uh, that heading will also grow wider or indeed get smaller because it's set to be a percentage. Uh, we should do that um, also for the Life of Shakespeare heading, um, so that would be one thing to go back and resolve. Um, but I think you will agree that we're gradually making good progress uh, and, and, and adjusting some of these things. For the next screencast, we'll make some uh, further adjustments to this, and then we're going to go in and um, add a CSS file to this to add back our lines underneath the text.